Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we will be looking at storage products and services and how they can be used and how they are different from each other. Also, we will be looking at storage, account and other things, how they can create at the high level. To begin with this, now we can see that uh, within this cloud models, you have infrastructure as a service as well as the pl platform as a service model. So within the Microsoft, you have all these possible uh, cloud storage options. Um, when we say you know, disk, file, blobs, and uh, queues, and tables, all these are the options you have. Let's have a look on the disks. Oh, so the disk type, of when we use is, if we have a virtual machine, if we want to attach the hard disk, so definitely it would be a disk uh, type of the storage we would be using. So that means the virtual machine's images will be used or stored for disk type of the storage and there is a storage type also we have a premium storage when we when we say premium storage it means that you have the uh, the space is coming from your SSDs so as you know solid state drives is the higher IOPS that means input output operations per second can be done uh, in the SSDs that means you're getting really higher performance compared with your normal disk. So that's where the uh, disk comes into the picture. Now, when you compare with the files, the only difference is that as your files goes a little bit above disk, that means it's not only just for the uh, scaling purpose, uh, it can also store the files as well as the disks. So with Azure Disk, we really are limited towards to the virtual machines and uh, that's especially, especially for the disk images. But with Azure Files, we could store disk images or any kind of file and folders that we wanted to store, we can store within the Azure Files. It's a, a full scale system and along with that Azure file storage supports SMB protocol uh, which is just a protocol to connect your files and um, like a she folders across your computers and it gives you an REST API that can use to access our data in a programmatical way also and that means the Azure files is a really great option for any legacy applications that you wanted to lift and shift as it is to migrate to your cloud it's a best option uh, because it's very common for legacy applications to rely on a writing things to file systems or file shapes instead of uh, using or having to update your applications as you move into the cloud to have it right everywhere or somewhere you can have it to continue to write files and shares uh, just to use as your files to make that file shares available in the cloud we have disks and file shares uh, which are coming from infrastructure as a service option and these provides a kind of framework for uh, very low level data operations like saving and mounting virtual machines and the disks and implementing full file systems within microsoft azure cloud now we uh, now we also have these three different platform as a service options as well as we have a uh, storage blobs within this this is called the storage blobs and also tables and the queues now when we talk about the blobs a blob is one of the more commonly used storage service uh, and this blob service or blob storage is mostly optimized for storing massive amount of unstructured data uh, for example a text data it can be or binary data so it's ideal for serving some kind of images or documents directly to a browser or maybe storing files and distributed access or streaming videos audio files or even storing files or data for backup and restore in case of disaster recovery or archiving purpose even storing data for analysis uh, by an on-premises or Azure hosted services, the blobs are the best to suitable things. If you're a developer, you know that it, you wanted to store some files uh, as the input output mechanism. Uh, that means a JSON file kind of, you know, programmical uh, structures also can be stored in your blobs. That might be a text file, 
that might be aggregated reports from other systems so that would um, that's where you would be you know, choosing blob as one of the type that you wanted to store whatever your data is you can store in your azure blobs that's what um, we can as a conclude for a blob but this is different from database uh, when you compare with the database because in a database uh, you can do a search against to your databases since we can't uh, do a search because it's a completely unstructured data um, on against to the blob you can't do that's why uh, it's different uh, you can't compare a blob with its storage um, blob storage with SQL database storage uh, that's what I wanted to convey here and it's better for other types of data other than the database and that's really good at is storing for example metadata images PDF files that we just talked about in a minute or so if you want a little bit more uh, granular control over your data that you wanted to you know serving uh, will move into as your tables basically because the as your tables you can uh, you can go for a structure kind of thing a little bit of structure why I'm saying is a little bit of uh, you know, structure because it's, it's a little bit more granular you have the control over your data that you are saving and you can move it into Azure tables and this is uh, within no SQL database and actually more closely resembles a real database than your Azure blobs let's have a look on it uh, if you see in this slide how uh, we have a table the table is a normal row kind of thing where uh, you can actually uh, Kind of in a query can be you can do a kind of in a query but it's very similar to your re, uh, relational database in the back end but it uses a different type of uh, technology and it's called no SQL which represents non relational database and with Azure tables uh, because of this different way of handling data uh, versus you uh, you how you do it in your SQL database would do it we get a massive auto scaling capabilities within Azure tables because we can query for a large number of data whatever it is coming out of uh, in a non-structured data for example if I take it up a Twitter feeds which comes as a non-structural so if something happens in the event we don't know in a way to put it in a SQL database because for a SQL again you need to have some of the columns in a proper way because it's a structure way we call it but here with a no structure it doesn't matter you know what kind of a structure it is coming we simply put it there and we can query any point of time from the Azure tables that's uh, that's that's where uh, Azure tables with a new no SQL database so that's that means there's no relationship uh, for the data which is coming so it can be easily analysis and it's massively dynamically you can scale up based on the load and you don't have to worry uh, with any of these uh, files or uh, solutions about managing uh, servers or auto scaling of uh, any of that it's all handled by Microsoft for uh, from the Azure side and our data is always available as quickly as possible to us now with Azure tables uh, we can also support for petabytes of data and and petabytes in in a layer about uh, layer above also uh, altogether like a terabytes uh, so that you can uh, think of this in terms of scaling of thousands of terabytes of data or millions of gigabytes of data there's a lot of room to grow within Azure table just to again conclude uh, with the Azure tables we get more structured data to save our data and the, with the blobs we could have only unstructured data we could have some images some PDF files or some text files all different sort of things can be stored into the blobs but with the tables there's a little bit more unstructured uh, a little bit more structured data uh, can be stored we define um, some columns it gives us an ability to uh, query our data unlike blobs uh, we can actually query any of the columns inside of your storage tables uh, with the capacity uh, act it does really act more like a database than your blob storage now uh, finally we have as you uh, queries to be you know, discussed so let's talk into the queries so queries is the first time out uh, as a FIFO kind of uh, product to understand about uh, Azure queues uh, actually it provides a cloud messaging between your applications and uh, components in designing applications for scale application components are often the decoupled so that they can scale independently as a queue storage delivers asynchronized messaging for communication between your application components uh, whether 
whether they are using in cloud on or on the desktop or on your on-premises server or maybe on your mobile devices. Q storages also supports a similar flow. For example, anything to do with your storage here, whatever we talk about in Microsoft as your cloud, you, you take as a storage that actually stores uh, something called an account. So every storage is uh, related and it will be on top or, or inside in a storage account. So la let's take you have a big computer normally and you have all the hard disk. So if you ask in a ways your uh, hard data is stored, you will say that you know I have it in my hard disk which is in this machine. Similarly, whatever the things are you are trying to you know stay store that all goes under a storage account. So the storage account will have uh, different types. For example, your disks, files, blobs, tables excuse all that are possible with the storage account let me show you you know what I'm trying to talk so this is one of my storage account which was created I'm gonna show you in a minute or so or maybe in upcoming videos but if you see here this is my storage account inside this you have the uh, under containers a containers are like a folder kind of thing which is uh, you can you know create inside that you will be you know, storing VHD files maybe and that's where you know blobs will comes into the picture and this is the SMB services or file services which we just talked about it and we also talked about the uh, tables like you know in the tables you can create a demo or AZ 900 table and you know just give it to your uh, give it to your developers and they would you know actually feed the tables in a right way and uh, let's also talk about other uh, one which is we are talking about the last one is a, a queues so when we talk about the queues actually uh, you would be you not know, talking about to store the accused services. Uh, let's take an example before we jump into example. Let's understand this process flow. So everything is related or inside your storage account that's you got it and inside that you have disks, files, blobs, tables, queues. So now we are talking about the queues. So within the queues what it's going to do is it's actually can be used to store and retrieve messages and the queues messages can be up to 64 kb in size maximum and uh, a queue can uh, contain millions of messages it's not one or two it can have you you, you can have millions of messages queues are generally used to store list of messages to be processed any uh, asynchronously that means uh, let's take an example let's say you want your customers to be able to upload pictures and you want to create thumbnails for each picture you could have uh, your customer wait for you to create thumbnails while uploading the pictures and the alternative uh, would be to use a queue because uh, when a customer finishes their upload write a message uh, to the queue uh, in a programmatical way and say that hey uh, now we have an Azure function retrieves that message and says that hey queue is now created and create a thumbnail within this so now what would happen is each of the parts of the processing can be scaled separately that gives you more control when it is actually tuning your uh, users so here for example the same thing like you ordered uh, uh, maybe a, a customer orders something uh, in his restaurant and uh, or maybe he's getting some uh, thing that must be on top of it to be you know, printed a label in that situation whatever the first comes uh, it goes to the queues and then it would uh, you know printed that label uh, one, one by one in a right order and you would be you know, getting that messages uh, can be you know, printed with such kind of you know numbering which as a label so queues are very useful when it comes to the developers because developers use mostly on the queues and the uh, when I say developer DevOps guys you know definitely use the queues that's where it's going to used in cloud that concludes the queues now